Hello everyone. So I've got some two new cool features I think that uh, I've added to GES and I'll push those later today. One is random one speed and direction. So you've got a new section called random win and you can enable the random one speed or random direction. And so the way this works is that you've got a timer and this is in seconds. So in this case every 10 seconds it's going to basically generate a random wind speed and the wind speed um, range right now since this is specifically tied to well right now we're set up for UDS but again it could be any system it doesn't matter and I'll explain that in just a minute um, you know you've got a wind speed range of 0 to 10 so every 10 seconds it's gonna pop out a 2 or a 5 or a 10 or whatever and you get a ram random wind speed same thing with direction um, 10 seconds and then you're going to get a random direction between 0 and 360. So that's pretty cool. Um, the next really cool thing is Niagara particle integration. So um, let me just, I know I demonstrated it in another video, but since this is kind of a official final one, uh, let me just show you how that works. So let's make sure we have it enabled and I'll explain some of that later as well. So right now we've got a little particle system and it takes a little while for the particle system to pick up the wind speed um, but I guess that's just how they work but just in a second you'll start seeing it pick up there we go since we've got the wind speed of 2 and then if we change it you know we're getting a higher wind speed and we can change that as well okay and go back down there we go. So we've got direction and wind speed change. Okay. Um, another thing about the particle or the system is whether you want to enable it or not. Now, the way this way I've got it set up is basically um, it looks for actors with a tag of ng. So you can see, and you can change this in code. It's not like it's difficult to do. So if we go to tag. Now we've got NG. And this way, if there's other particle systems, it doesn't affect the other particle systems unless you want it to. So, you know, you could. I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, it should. It should work for other particle systems as well. So any 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 um, Niagara particle systems that have a tag of NG, you can turn on and and turn off. So I don't think I showed you actually turning it on and off. <laughs> I I get lost sometimes. <laughs> Uh, so right now you can see it's generating particles. Just think of this as start simulation, stop simulation. So when we uncheck it, the particles are still simulating for a little bit, but then they stop. And this is just the way Niagara is set up. You, know, you can set how long these particles last and how long, you know, it stops simulation. But you can see that it stopped and then you can enable it. And this is mainly just a debugging feature. Pretty simple. Okay, so let's go over how I've integrated Niagara. Um, so first, everything, this is the event graph, and so everything is pretty much run off the event graph. We do a timer check for any kind of weather change, regardless of what system you're using it. I've tried to make it agnostic as possible. Um, so so uh, here we're checking, um, we're just checking and grabbing the ultra dynamic weather um, parameter value called wind force and we're setting it to the GES parameter value. Now why are we grabbing the parameter value of ultra dynamic sky and setting it to GES? Well the reason for that is that again we want to make it kind of agnostic so if you had a uh, sky creator and it produced a the correct wind force value you could plug sky creator and then have it set the set to the um, GES wind force thing or whatever system you have as long as it can create this particular wind force value that um, the Niagara system accepts then you can set this what that means is in your in your Niagara system you're adding a parameter collection so instead of adding the actual uh, wind force value from UDS or if SkyCreator had one from SkyCreator, all you have to do is add the GES wind force value. So this makes it again system agnostic from your particle system since this is already included in GES. So you um, add your parameter collection, 
you grab, and I, again, I, I think I've already gone over this in another video, but I will do it again real quickly. Let's just delete it. Okay, <clears throat> so you've got a Niagara parameter, parameter collection, and Niagara parameter collections are based off of um, off of uh, material parameter collections. It's pretty cool. So basically, I created a Niagara parameter collection that links to the material parameter collection GES. You can see that it has all the same values as the parameter collection. And what this means is that any values you change in here get pushed to here and then get pushed to the parameter collection here. And we'll go ahead and add that. So we'll just add GES. And you know, none of these obviously really um, correlate with uh, Niagara. So we just have that wind force one. We'll grab the wind force there and we'll drag it over here and we'll save that. So any other particle systems you want to use, you just add a parameter collection, add that value. Now you do have to have um, the uh, wind force um, uh, variable in your particular parameter collection, or excuse me, in your particle system. You know, if you're creating a new particle system, you have to have this wind force variable. I am very, very new to Niagara. I don't even know how they created this variable or, or, or how you would do it or how you would uh, set it to whatever system you're using. Because if I right click here and add an empty emitter, you know, I've got the emitter updates, but if I click on that and type in wind force, it's not there. So it's wind force is something that, um, you know, something that was created for this particle emitter. And this is just a sample particle emitter. I mean, I just went basically and uh, went to FX, advanced. Um, oh, actually, no, just new um, Niagara system and new Niagara system from emitters. And I chose this one. So I don't know if these other systems have um, wind force in them or not. Again, not that familiar with it. Um, so that's all you have to do is add that and click on your wind force actor and drag it and drop it there and then you're all set from that standpoint okay and again you is whatever system you're using as long as you can pass in wind force and set the material parameter collection wind force then you can use it in your particle system um, I think that is it went over the enable disable um, oh okay so uh, this is not part of the particle system in Niagara or anything, um, and I'll do a separate video on it, but I just wanted to go over how we're kind of making GES system agnostics that you can use either any system, um, any weather system. You can even change the, um, you know, weather and wind direction manually. If you had a keyboard um, event, like pressing key one or two and pressing key one, set the wind speed to 10 and two, set it to five. You could do that without even having Sky Creator or um, Ultra Dynamic Sky, as long as you set these two variables. So if you grab an instance of GES and grab that variable and set it to 10, then this GES will trigger, excuse me, this is a direction, set it to 360, or 360, then it'll trigger and run. If you set the wind speed to um, whatever, and again, it'll trigger and run. So you could totally just pass in those values randomly or if you have another system that has say um, it triggers another system you know my sky system that has events for um, direction change and wind speed change so when that system fires off an event for wind speed change you grab an instance of GES you grab this variable and you set it and you know you're good to go so um, I think that goes over that, the random win and the particle system. So that should cover it for this update. I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know and I'll be pushing this out a little bit later today. Thanks.